Oh, talk. hang on. Okay, now. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Today we're going to talk about how to set up your uh, protocol for your, the KC4 um, microplate reader. And before we get into the uh, system, what you be aware of is the few things you'll need to have on hand before you set up your protocol is a copy of your assay insert sheet, which is the sheet that comes with your um, your assay kit, so if you're doing glucose or cholesterol or um, hemoglobin, it'll all come with a specific procedure insert sheet. So it'll tell you the parameters of your assay and specifically what you need because you'll need to put some of this information um, into the system because it does give specifics for microplate, microplate reader settings that you'll need to have. So um, just make sure you have a copy of this when you're setting your profile so you can type in. Um, your appropriate uh, reads, which we'll talk about a little bit more here in a few minutes. And then in addition to your inserts, um, depending on what plate you're using, typically um, you'll use either a 48 well plate, which is an example of that right here. Can they get close to that? So this is a 48 well microplate reader and then this is a 98, 96 well reader, which it doesn't have wells in it, but this is the frame that uh, we typically use when we order um, 96 well plates, which we typically use uh, 96 well plates for our ELISA procedures, which we typically look at insulin or um, other types of hormones. So these are the two types of plates that you will more than likely be using. Um, we just need to know uh, the difference between those two because you'll also need to specify what plate you're using when you um, set up the protocol. So having said that, when you set up, actually let me log out here real quick. So, when you log in, um, if you're coming into the computer, uh, first thing in the morning to log in, the uh, username um, for the computer is user, U-S-E-R, and then the uh, password is infotech, I-N-F-O-T-E-C-H. So that's uh, your login uh, to get into the computer, and then once you log in, this screen will show up. What you're going to click on is the KC4 icon, which you know might be on the typically it's on the bottom left hand side, but just depending on um, your um, home page, because everyone will have a different type of home page when they log in on this computer. Um, you'll click on the KC4 icon, and then when this screen pulls up, again, if you're going to be using this. Um, before you set up a protocol, that will be the first thing you'll need to do is set up um, a new protocol. So, what you'll need to do is um, you'll notice these uh, icons here at the top. You actually got two sets here and then some up here. But we're going to go to Wizard to set up a protocol. So, you'll click on that. It's going to give you three different settings. First thing we would do is click on Description. And here you're just simply setting up, you know, naming your protocol. Now it gives you six prompts, but you don't have to use all six. Typically, um, what I do is if I'm doing a total cholesterol procedure, I'll just put in the name total cholesterol. Actually, let me type, type all that. So we'll just go total. There, abbreviate it. Um, you can put in the date if you want. You know, depending on what you're doing, you might have other specific specifications. Maybe if this protocol is for a specific population, you could define that here. But these six prompts are for um, your, op your options. Like I say, you don't have to use all six. So once you've uh, set up your description, um, click OK. And then you'll go to your reading parameters. And this is where you'll need to refer back to your insert, what I showed you at the beginning, so you can go with your specifications. So, let's see, I had total cholesterol, and we have a total cholesterol insert here. So, most of your procedures will be an endpoint reading, but you'll need to look at your insert page to make sure it doesn't specify whether it's a kinetic reading or a spectrum reading. Most of, if you're looking at you know, lipid parameters such as cholesterol, triglycerides, um, HDL, most of them are an endpoint type reading, so that's what you would select. And then with wavelengths, again, um, 
refer to your insert to see if it specifies if you have to do more than one wavelength, but typically um, it's just one, so you would not select more than just the first one. But again, just depending on what your procedures tell you, uh, you might select um, more than one. And in this case, with the Michael Perry, you can select up to six. And then this box here where it says 405, this is the absorbance reading. This is the absorbance that your microplate reader will read at for your assay. So what you would do is go um, to your insert, insert page and see what specific, specific absorbance you need to read at. And for total cholesterol, based on our insert that we have here, it specifies it to read at um, 500. So what we would do is collect five, click on 500 and there's your reading. So that's what you'll read at. Read mode, again, is typically normal, but depending on what your assay requires, you might do a rapid or a sweep read mode, but we typically keep it at normal. And again, depending on which plate you uh, prefer to use, that's where you'll specify here in this icon box here. Typically, we use the 48 well for lipids. And the brand of well that I showed you earlier was a CoStar brand. So it was a 48 well, so here's a CoStar 48. Select that, and then it gives you the specifications, you know, six by eight, and then well numbers, which we'll show you here more in just a few minutes. After that, um, click on, well, look at your insert, and if it requires um, an incubation period, then you would specify the time and the temperature. Total cholesterol, it typically requires a, uh, incubation period so you would click yes and click preheating so that the uh, microplate reader will preheat up to the required temperature and depending on what the specifications are you would define your temperature for total cholesterol it's usually around 37 degrees Celsius and then incubation time which is what lag time means anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes I believe here in this specific insert that I'm using here, I think it specifies, if I can find it, I believe it says 10 minutes, no 5 minutes, I'm sorry, so put in 5 minutes, so you've got hours, minutes, and seconds, and then don't worry about shaking, this microplate reader does have the capacity to do its shaking if the asset requires it, but um, we actually have our own shaker um, in the lab that we use and uh, prefer to use that one and not the one that's in the uh, Michael Peru, so we won't have to worry about using this right now. And then as far as pre-reading, um, you can use this. It's not required, but depending on what your insert tells you, it might require that you do a few pre-reading assessments. But if you were to do it, you would select these icons here. But again, refer to your uh, assay insert for specifications. So after you've finished your parameters, click OK. You'll get this initial icon because you're putting in a new protocol. And um, you'll want to click yes. It's going to say it's going to be clear, but it's not going to be clear. It's basically just saving it. So just click yes when you get this icon. And then you'll get a check mark here in a few seconds. And then just go back in and make sure that it was saved and all of your parameters that you just put in are in there. So just click OK. Then you'll move to your layout. This is where you'll set up your reading outline for the plate. So this is where you'll set up your uh, standard curve and your sample outline for the plate. So again, this was a 48 well. So you've got um, rows A through F and columns 1 through 8. So this is how it's set up. And what you'll want to set up first on your plate is your standard curve. So. What you'll do is you're going to go to first thing you'll set up is your blank because you'll always do a blank reading with all of your uh, standard curves. And what you'll do is, depending on how you want to set up your samples, you can either do them horizontally, across, or vertically, up and down. I prefer to go up and down, so I'm going to go to where it says replicates and hit two because you want to do all of your samples in duplicate, at least in duplicate and then you'll go here on the first box, A1, and left click, and it'll give you two duplicates. And actually, I meant to go vertically, so let me clear this out. And how you clear is if you go 
to this icon, hit empty, and click on those boxes, it erases it so you can start over, over which is a nice feature. So we'll start over, I'll hit blank, I'll go to replicates for two, and then here, click vertical, again, horizontal, which we just did, across, vertical, up and down. So again, I prefer going up and down, but this is totally up to you. Click on A1 again, and you get two boxes that have blank. So this is where you would put your blank samples. Now after you've gotten that completed, then you'll go to back to the uh, top I type icon and go to standard. And the first thing you'll see is the zero, but you need to set up your standard curve concentration. So you'll click this box by the arrow and you'll set up your concentrations. So we got zero, and with total cholesterol, usually we'll go 50, 150, 225, 300. This is just an example, but this is just based on what's been done in the past here in our lab. So you usually have about four, four or five concentrations. You'll click OK. And now you'll proceed to add um, your concentrations. So, something to make things a little easier is if you go over to this auto select and hit next concentration, what we'll do is it'll give you standard one, standard two, and again, these are in replicates, so every time I click on the empty box, it's going to fill in the next box. So, our first standard of zero is in duplicate, our second standard of 50 is in E and F, go up to A2, left click. It's giving me my third standard in duplicate, my fourth standard, and my fifth standard in duplicate. So again, you do this by clicking next concentration and it'll add the preceding concentrations that you put into your curve. After you've done that, then you will typically do an assay control as part of your curve. And um, it'll be the initials will be control one. But again, you'll do it in duplicate. And then all you'll do is go to the next box, left click, and it gives you a duplicate for your control. Once your curve is set up, then you can add your uh, samples that you're actually measuring from your participants or your specimens, wherever you're collecting your variables from. You'll go back to type, click on sample, make sure again it's in duplicate. And if you click next ID, it'll add everything in descending order. So again, Click here, gives a sample one in duplicate. Click here, gives a sample two in duplicate.